Have you ever struggled with just feeling like you're not enough? I mean, maybe you thought about it like this, like, oh, if only I could be like this, then they would like me. Or if only I could be better at this, then she would like me. I mean, think about it. There's a lot of different categories that we do this with. Maybe with sports. Maybe you felt like if you could be the best player on the team, then maybe your coach would like you. Or maybe with your parents. You felt like if you would stop making so many bad choices and be make better choices, then maybe your parents would like you. Whatever it may be, there's a lot of different things that we may feel like we're just not enough. But the problem is, is this just is comparison and the rules never stay the same. And we may make it one day and the next day we fail and then we just feel like we're not enough. Or sometimes a new person comes to town who's smarter than us or better than us or faster than us or more gifted than us. And then again, we stop measuring up. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Not feeling enough. all struggle with not feeling like we're enough. We struggle with the question, do they like me? Do I like me? But the good news is, is that I believe there's a message from God for all of us today that I think will be a game changer in how we think about ourselves. And that's what I want to share with you as we kind of wrap up this series called Like Me This Week. And so I want to share this verse from you. This comes in Romans. This is in chapter 12. This was written by a guy named Paul. He was actually writing this letter to a group of people in Rome. And remember, he's the guy who had a radical encounter with Jesus. It completely changes his life so that he spends the rest of his life telling people about Jesus, either meeting them in person or writing them letters because he's so amazed about how Jesus changed his life. And so I want to read a part with you. This is um, in Romans chapter 12. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, let's break that down. The first part is don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Paul was challenging people, stop trying to have the same responses to everybody else. Stop having the same thinking patterns, the same patterns and customs of this world. Stop trying to live like everybody else and trying to be enough, trying to earn your status, trying to be the best, trying to earn whatever it is that you think you're earning. Stop trying to be enough. In fact, we're all going to hear the same messages in the world, all of us. But we have a choice in how we're going to respond to those messages. And so what do we do? How do we deal with that? Paul says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So instead, our response is to invite God into, into helping us think differently, to transform our thinking process, to transform, to have a new way, a new pattern of thinking. That's interesting. But then Paul says, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And God's will, it's a weird phrase, but it's really just meaning that what God wants for you. And I think this is amazing to think about that. What does God want for us? He wants us to know that we are loved. He wants you to know how he actually sees you. It's very different than probably how you see yourself. And it's not this arrogance. It's not being cocky, but God loves you. He sees you. He says, you are a child of God. No matter how you were created or brought into this world, you are not a mistake. I love you. You are worthy. I created you and I created you with your purpose. In fact, several verses down, Paul actually goes into this whole um, spiel about all the gifts that God has given each person and that you should be that person, that gift that God has given you. He's given you that gift to be good at and use it. Be, be that gift, be that person that God has designed you. Don't compare yourself to everybody else because God gives us worth and value. He sees you and he loves you. And this is what I think is the radical transformation process for us is if we see how God sees us, if we actually see how God sees us, that should change how we see ourselves to see the worth and the value that we have. And hopefully that'll change our thinking pattern so we stop trying to measure up, that we stop feeling like we're not enough because God came to the earth and he died on a cross 
literally came and died for our sins before we could do anything, before we could repent and say we're sorry, before we could even try to earn his love, before we could do anything. He did that for us because he loves us so much and he is abundant in his love. In fact, he says, I can give you what is enough and I have so much, I can actually give you more than what's enough, more and more and more, where it's overflowing. And so today, the bottom line that I hope we can all take with us is I can like me because God loves me. I can like me because God loves me. Now, I can't force you to believe that truth, but I encourage you to wrestle with that, that God loves you. And you might need a small group to help you to think through that and to encourage you and to remind you when you're kind of stuck in that comparison like spiral, when maybe you're making comments about yourself, maybe try to even catch yourself and maybe write down on a card and stick it somewhere to remind yourself like, okay, what does God see in me? Well, how does God actually see me? Instead of getting stuck in that same spiral of you're not enough. You, we all need each other to remind each other and we need to remind ourselves. So I encourage you, invite God into your thinking. Invite him, ask him to change the way you think. And when you get stuck on that thinking that's negative and bad and that you're not enough and you find yourself trying to compare yourself, trying to be enough in some other way, repent. Which really is just a way of saying you're gonna turn away from that which is kind of like changing a channel. It's like you saying, okay, I'm gonna change the channel on my thinking. I'm gonna go to a different channel. I'm gonna stop thinking this way and I'm gonna go to this way. So I encourage you guys, imagine what it would be like if we were not trying to be enough for everybody else, but instead recognized our worth and our value and who God says we are. And we embrace that. We would stop being comparing ourselves. We would stop being jealous. We would stop being so unhappy with who we are, but instead be joyful and amazed at who God is. And in turn, ugh, we would realize, man, I think I kind of like me because God loves me. I encourage you guys to process that this week. I hope that's encouraging. And I invite you to come on Thursday so we could discuss this more and hopefully so that you can process a little bit more together.